Good morning, and welcome to St. John. It is great to be here with you this morning. Good morning, Pastor Jeff. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a announcement to make, and that is regarding your essentials card. There's a lot of good stuff that's packed on here. Hope you picked one up when you came in. Um, a lot of things for the youth, and I want to highlight one of them. That is confirmation registration begins this week. On our website, there are links for 7th graders and 8th graders to not only register, but also to order your materials. And so, hope you'll go ahead and get started on that, start making preparations, uh, and we'll begin confirmation. At the end of the month, we'll have some orientation, and, uh, and we'll start in September. So, please make a note of that. For our next announcement, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Seth Gierke up, and he's going to talk about new Bible studies that are starting today, right? Yeah. Um, actually, next week. So I uh, wanted to let you know this week in advance so you can be preparing to uh, pick a Bible study that you'd like to join. As live director here at St. John, one of the things we want to encourage you all to do is, as a disciple of Jesus, is to live in biblical community. We found that in Scripture and the way that God wired us, outside of God's face and his presence, joy is found in relationship. Joy is found in loving relationship with one another. And that's what we hope to encourage all of us to be a part of here at St. John. And next Sunday, August 14th, between the services at 945, five new studies are starting, as you can see them all right there. All of these leaders have led at St. John before, but I wanted to run really quickly through. You can find this at stjohn.tv by click, clicking on Go Deeper. And then adults. So let's just go through these real quickly. Starting next Sunday uh, with Bobby Gorner, we, he is continuing in 1 Samuel, the rise of Israel's first king, going and talking about Saul. So if you're interested in that, that is in Ministry Center 104. First and second, Peter uh, will be a study uh, with Kenneth Graber and Tim Hayes and um, Mark Garrett. And this is also a study written by our own David Steele which is exciting. That will happen in Admin 101 and 102. This is also a class we started re recently. It's called Family Discipleship. So if you have kids anywhere from birth to living under your house still, if you have somewhat kids, your children, no matter what age, in close contact with you and you want to do, you want to learn more about how to disciple them, how to walk with them in Jesus, this is a great thing to study, and they're out on to do a new book called Intentional Parenting, and they'll meet in Admin 103 on Sunday. So anyone with a child of any age to walk with them with the hoppers. Ephesians 6, this is going to be a really fun one too, something we don't always talk a lot about in church, but we know there's spiritual warfare going around us all the time. Satan ro roars like a prowling lion, right, trying to get us, but God in his amazing power and spirit protects us and walks with us. We're going to be talking about that battle that Paul talks about in Ephesians 6 with Richard in the chapel starting next week. And finally, um, if you'd like to learn how to pray and listen to God's voice. Uh, Jesus said, we're sheep and we have ears to hear the Father's voice, the shepherd's voice. And if you'd like to continue in the word and using scripture to continue to pray and listen for God's voice, Trish will be leading that in CLC 112 across from the high school youth room. Five amazing studies starting next week. We'd love for you to pick one, build your life together here in biblical community. Thanks for giving me your time. Thank you, Seth. That's, uh, these are very, it's a very important part of uh, spiritual growth, is this, this living together in biblical community. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Jacob Tice up, who I lovingly call a Jake from St. John. And uh, Jake is a, a son of the congregation. He's been a member here, I think, uh, most of his life, right? Most of your life. And because the, the best part. And, uh, uh, and, and Jake has been studying to be a DCE, and he uh, it now is going to be doing his internship here at St. John over the next year. So I'd just like to install him as our DCE intern here at St. John. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, according to the usual custom of the church, Jacob Tice has been assigned to St. John as a DCE intern. As a student assigned to our congregation, he will continue his education in preparation for service to the church as a called worker. From 1 Timothy chapter 4, practice these things, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. 
persist in this, for by doing so you will save both yourself and your hearers. Jacob, are you prepared to serve as DCE intern in this congregation under taking your assignments as one who seeks training for service in the church as a DCE intern? If so, then answer, I am with the help of God. I am with the help of God. In the presence of God and of this assembly, I install you as DCE intern in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, through the grace of your Holy Spirit, you pour the gifts of love into the hearts of your faithful people. Grant health, both of mind and body, to your servant Jacob, who now begins his term of service in our midst. Enable him to love you with his whole heart, strength, and mind, and to perform those things that are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's rise now and greet each other in the name of the Lord. I'm happy to see you. make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment now and reflect upon our need for God's grace and mercy.
Let us now confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now bring our offerings forward as our act of worship as we sing, This is the Feast. be seated for our time of prayer. We come to you, Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer and rejoicing in the mighty works that you do. Lord, we continue to celebrate with people who celebrate. We mourn with those who mourn. We endure with those enduring. Father, for Craig and Tori and Vince, Bradley and Ricky, Craig and Scott, Eve, Cindy and Shirley and Barbie, Jerry, Pete, Laura, for Doris, Becky, Marianne, Lisa, Christina, Mike, Robert, for Zephy, Mike, Charlie, Harrison, Connie, and Anne, 
William, Joyce, Carla, Kimberly, Claudette, James and Brian, Christine, Ben, Gladys and Weston, Charles and Janice, for Jen and Jack, Donna, Donna, for Emma, Millie, Raina, Joyce, for Venon. Lord, we ask that you spend a special prayer request for Venon regarding being hospitalized with a blood infection. For Ben McKean, a 19-year-old, Lord, who continues to struggle and um, enduring far more than um, certainly most 19-year-olds have to endure, we pray for healing for him. Lord, for Doris Frankie, who's having um, some further amputation being done uh, on her one remaining foot, we pray for that surgery tomorrow, and we pray you give her strength to heal. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as we endure, there are plenty of things that we rejoice in along the way of life, and Lord, we're rejoicing with Ron and Kirsten Coleman in honor of their 31st wedding anniversary. Continue to bless them and all those who celebrate anniversaries this time of year. Lord, we rejoice with them and continue to strengthen their marriage. Lord, we also lift up and rejoice with Kylie Clark, who will celebrate her 23rd birthday later this week. And we also, uh, Lord, we celebrate with Doug Patchkey and the whole Patchkey family as Brooklyn Patchkey was born today. And so we rejoice with this new granddaughter of his and uh, for the parents, Wesley and Candace, we pray that you continue to strengthen them all. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask for you to bless the Combs family, the Shoon family, for Chester, and Shirley, for Janice Axe. We pray for Elmer and Ruth Schroeder, uh, for Susan Swanke. Lord, we ask that you continue to strengthen uh, your people in their times of need and give them protection and guidance as they face different decisions. Father, we also ask that you will bless our land with the much needed, much needed rain. And we thank you for where it has rained and we pray that you nourish the land that still needs it. And Lord, for those who grieve, we pray for the family of Debbie Hensey, the family of Karen Crumpholtz, and the family of Bob Sheeby. Continue to comfort them all in the knowledge and the truth of the resurrection for all who believe in your son, Jesus, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. For our world leaders, for the nations of the world, especially those in conflict, we pray for your truth to rise above all the noise. We ask you to bless your people. Rise up your church throughout the world so that needs can be met, people can be comforted and helped. Service to one another is a way we honor you. Father, we also pray for our first responders and medical workers here in our own community. We pray for our future leaders of our government and our nation. And we ask you to bless um, our president and Congress and our judges, and all those who serve. Father, for our military, we ask you to bless them and protect them in their duties. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask you to bless Cypress Chapel and be with Pastor Demick in his time away. Bless Natalie and the kids. Keep the ministry there uh, strong and thriving and lifting high the cross of Christ. We pray for Principal Dale Wolfgram at Emmanuel Lutheran School in Giddings and ask you to bless him in that congregation. Lord, we're also asking you to bless the transition for Alex Irwin, who is uh, the DC that's taken the call here and will be moving here at the end of this month. And we pray for him and also the, as he takes on that role of a director of student ministry, we pray for continued uh, blessing in his life as we all get to know him and meet him, be of support for him. And we also pray for uh, the ministry in which he'll be involved in. Lord, also for Jacob, as he's been installed today as an intern, continue to bless him this year, uh, strengthen him in his duties, and, and help him uh, be focused on those continued studies uh, to obtain that DCE. 
And finally, Lord, for all those who will donate blood today in the blood drive, we are thankful for that, and we ask that you bless them as they give that gift of life that is going to be helpful to others in their time of need. We lift these prayers up to you, Heavenly Father, in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue with our readings. The first reading is taken from James chapter 5, beginning with verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is Revelations 3, beginning with chapter 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the verse. According to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect." This is the gospel of the Lord. We profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time, I'd like to invite the children to come up for a brief children's message. to see your smiles this morning. Yep, it's always fun to see your smiles. Yeah, all pretty smiles, handsome smiles. Well, I want to ask you um, if you know the difference between these two words, patience and patience. Did that sound like two different words? Patience and patience? Patience. It did? No. Well, Pastor Mark is going to talk about patience today. We have to figure out what kind of patience he's talking about. One kind of patience is someone who's at the hospital. Have you ever known, you've been to a hospital before, or you've seen them at least, right? And the people that are sick, or the people that are injured, the people that are being taken care of, are called patients. So you have doctors and nurses, and they take care of the patient, okay? Now that's one of those words, but it's spelled differently than the other word, patience, which means waiting. Have you ever heard that? You you have to... You have to wait on something. Now, Pastor Mark's going to be talking about waiting, that kind of patience. But did you know that there's a story in the Bible that actually has both? And it's in Mark. And Mark's, or in Matthew, actually it's different, different places in Scripture where this same basic story is told. Jesus is coming along and he finds a man who has a boy. And the boy has got some problems. If he was in a hospital, he'd be a patient needing to be worked on. But then the disciples couldn't heal him. It's kind of like doctors. Maybe doctors can't heal everybody. Well, the disciples couldn't bring any healing. And you know what Jesus said? He says, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? That was Jesus Jesus is, oh, Jesus, I think, needs some patience. I think he's perfect, right? He is perfect. But the way he's expressing it makes it sound like he could use some patience. But Jesus is patient. He's patient with his people. He's patient with these people there. He's patient with you and me. He waits for us. He also healed that young boy, the patient. So he healed him. So there, Jesus is is being patient, and he heals a patient. Two different words, because they're spelled differently. 
but they sound the same. So I'm curious, do you ever have to be patient? Do you? You have to be patient? What, when are you told to be patient, like waiting? When do you have to wait on something? What's that? I got a shot. Say it a little bit louder. I got a shot. Oh, okay. Anybody patient for Christmas time? Do you have to be patient for that? Or birthday parties? So like you have to wait, right? Does your mom or dad ever tell you to be patient? Yeah? What they're saying is to, to wait. They're not telling you to get sick and go to the hospital and be that kind of patient, right? But they're telling you to wait. Do you ever have to be patient for your mom and dad? Do you ever have to wait on your mom and dad? Yeah? When, yeah, how about, do they ever take you to school or preschool? Yeah? And they may have to wait on you and you might have to wait on them. And that's okay. Jesus helps us develop patience because Jesus is perfect in his patience. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for patience that you help us wait for good things. We also pray, Father, that you heal patients, those who need healing. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, all right, you can head on back to your seats now. and welcome again to St. John. I pray God's peace and patience with you this morning. So today's topic is patience, and here's the Bible verse. It's James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. We have received dozens and dozens of Bible verses from people for this series. And so I just want to say thank you very much if you send in a Bible verse and apologize if we don't get to yours because there's no way we're going to get to all of them. But we thank you for sending them in anyways because we love to know what your favorite Bible verses are. Maybe we'll use them in the future. I don't know. Uh, but they were all good, right? Because they were all from the Bible. <laughs> and uh, so th today's Bible verse here submitted by Tim Hayes. And he actually submitted a while back, and here's how it went down. We have here at St. John this really great men's group called the Men of God. And each spring they have a, a big retreat where, I don't know, I think there was like 40 guys this year that uh, went away for a weekend, and there's Bible study, and there's worship, and there's male bonding, and there's bacon, and I think there's even some Lutheran beverages. I don't know, I've never actually seen them, probably because they're in a koozie. And, uh, but, but the, the highlight, uh, or one of the highlights of the weekend is the auction, where uh, they raise a lot of money for charity, usually five figures or, or, or more, and uh, guys will bring things to the retreat to be auctioned off, and guys will bring money to buy the things at auction, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll get into the mix this year. And so here's what I did. I, I auctioned off a sermon, and I said, winning bidder— Get this, winning bidder gets to pick the topic, 
gets to pick the Bible verse, gets to pick the date, and then here's the best part. The higher the bidding goes, the shorter the sermon will get, <laughs> right? And, and so Tim Hayes won. He was the high bidder. He picked the topic, patience. He picked the verse, right? You got the verse from James. He helped me pick the date. And he bid it up to the point where we got it down to 16 minutes. 16 minutes. So let's put 16 minutes on the clock and see how I do. Ready? And no, it is not lost on me, the irony, that I'm about to preach a sermon on patience with a clock running. <laughs> right? Uh, but uh, I, hey, the, the thing about, about patience is, you know, I've become more patient as I've gotten older. And it's come at a hard price. And I, I used to be much, much less patient when I was younger. And I think that's just, just true for a lot of people. And I wonder why that is. I mean, shouldn't we be more patient when we're young, when we've got all this time? And then shouldn't we be less patient when we're a little bit older and we don't have much time left? I don't know. But I know that even the most patience, uh, patient of us still has a tough time waiting on the Lord and having the kind of patience that God has. Also, I have an object lesson this morning. A, 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 a faith is like an ice cube tray, okay? Faith is like an ice cube tray, and I'll tell you why at the end. So you got to pay attention for another 15 minutes. Don't, don't drift off or you'll, you won't know why faith is like an ice cube tray. Okay, on to our verse. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. There are three things that we're going to learn from this Bible verse this morning. Number one, if necessary, we must be patient until the Lord returns. This means that we might not get all of our prayers answered until he returns. But we will get all of our prayers answered, which is why Jesus can say in places like Matthew chapter 21, he says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I know that sometimes people read this verse and then they try to make excuses for God. And they say things like, well, he, he meant that you'll get it if it's consistent with his will. Or uh, you'll get it as long as it's, um, you know, good for you. Or, you know, whatever. And we'll, we'll try to put asterisks. We'll try to get Jesus off the hook. But we don't need to. Because there are no asterisks in, in Holy Scripture. It, it, we, Jesus doesn't need to get off the hook. He's God. He can be on the hook. And so he meant when he said, when he said, if you believe, if you are a believer, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and your Lord and Savior and your only hope for salvation, if you believe that you are a sinner, someone who's broken and has, has messed things up, and is not capable of fixing things on your own, and not capable of being good enough for God. And therefore, you realize that your only hope to avoid death and destruction, your only hope for eternal life, is what Jesus has done for you on the cross. If that's what you believe, then you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And that's a promise. Now, of course, what James is trying to get us to understand this morning, we'll put the James verse back on there, is that, that it might not be until he returns. It might not be until he comes back and he, um, he fixes everything and restores everything to the way it should have been in the beginning and ushers in the new creation. So we should pray knowing that our prayers are going to be answered. All right, number two. The second thing we're going to learn from this verse this morning is it also, this verse uses God's patience as a model for how we should be patient. Right? And the, the, the sister verse is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. 
And uh, that's true. I mean, if you're like me, you know, we, we, we start to get frustrated, right? We pray and we pray and we pray, and uh, sometimes our prayers are not answered. And we're, start, we're like, okay, God, you know, uh, how, how, how long? And, and we start to get a little perturbed with God because he's being slow to answer our prayers. And what James is trying to get us to understand here, and, and Peter's trying to get us to understand, is that actually we're misinterpreting it as slowness. It's not slowness. God's not being slow. God is being patient. Look what it says. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. All right, repentance is God's bag. That's his thing. He, he, he wants, he is waiting patiently for every one of his children, every human being he's ever created in his image, whom he loves to turn and repent and believe in his son and come to faith. And he's, he's willing to be patient. And he's patient with us, even the best of us, even the, 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 those of us who, have, uh, who, who are, uh, try to follow his commands as much as we can. We still have our pet sins, right? We all have our thing. We all have our thing where we, we continue to fight this and we continue to, we find ourselves coming to the cross over and over and over again in repentance. And he is patient in his mercy, out of his love. He always is faithful and continues to forgive and forgive and forgive, and he always will. He's not being slow, folks. He's being patient with us. Now, the third thing that we can learn from this verse is this verse speaks to being patient for the Lord's coming. So if I'm not going to get my prayers answered until he returns, right, then, uh, boy, I, I, uh, uh, I, I, better, I better really focus on his return. It's really his return. It's really the resurrection, my resurrection, your resurrection at the end of time when we are uh, brought back to life. And he takes this body, this broken body, and he repairs it and fixes it. And we live together in the new creation. And all of our prayers are answered. That's really what we should be fixating on. So the, the, the moral of the story is that, you know, if you're like me, right, we tend to really just focus on the problems that we have to deal with in our lives right here and now. And uh, we, we, we should really be focusing on the promises to come, on the resurrection. Or we focus on oh, the, the, the prayers that we've prayed and why they're not being answered now instead of focusing on his promise that is good to answer them completely at the end of time. In Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 10, these are the words of Jesus, right? Words of Jesus. He says, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, right? I've told you to be patient, and because you've kept it, you've been patient, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. Wow, yes please, I would like to avoid that, right? So that is good incentive to be patient, all right? He says, I am coming soon, and that's by his perfect definition of soon not our imperfect definition of soon, all right? He says, hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, the one who's patient, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. That's awesome. And knowing that that's what's going to happen to me, to us, together, knowing that that's the last hour, knowing that that's what we have to look forward to for an eternity makes it easier to deal with whatever I'm going through today. 
Now, have you noticed that, uh, uh, that other than patience this morning, there's been another really strong theme, and that is the theme of the Lord's return. See, patience is all about the Lord's return. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Right? God expects the resurrection. He expects the, 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 the new creation, that promise of the new creation, to make it easier for us to deal with whatever we're dealing with today in our present circumstances. He expects the resurrection the promise of the new creation to make it easier to be patient today. Now, um, I know that, um, that, that those of you who know me really well know that I love camping, canoeing, hiking, love that kind of stuff, just love it. In fact, I've made lists of all of the rivers that I want to canoe in my life, kind of a bucket list, right? All the rivers I want to battle. And I've made a list of all of the, the trails and the national parks I want to go to and, and, and hike, hike these trails. And, uh, and I, I've, got, I've got these, this is something I'm really, I love doing that kind of stuff. But then here's the, here's the reality. I'm 57 years old, and many of you know I have a progressive degenerative disease called psoriatic arthritis. And um, there's, there's good medicines, and I'm getting good to it. i got a great doctor, but um, there's not an infinite amount of time left. And it's become clear to me that I'm not going to have the opportunity, the time, to paddle every river on my list. I'm not going to have the time to hike every trail on my list. Now, I, I know the, and I pray that the Lord will give me many good days yet, and a lot of those rivers will get paddled, a lot of those trails will get hiked, but there's, I'm not going to get to all of them. Time is running short, and eventually I'm not going to be able to do those things. So I can either get frustrated, sad, depressed, angry about that, or I can focus on the new creation. I can remember that that God has promised that at the end of time, he's going to resurrect this body, this one. He is going to heal it completely, take this disease completely away, and he's going to get rid of every imperfection and make this body to be as perfect as he originally intended it to be. And then I'm going to live forever like that in the new creation. And he is going to delight in creating as many rivers as I want to paddle. And he's going to delight in creating as many trails as I want to follow. And he's going to delight in that creative work because he loves to do it. And knowing that, knowing what my future holds, it becomes much easier to be patient now. Faith is like an ice cube tray. You know, nobody wants to drink a lukewarm Coke, right? Nobody wants a room temperature iced tea, right? By definition, I guess that would be not an iced tea. It would just be a tea, right? No, you want ice in it, right? You want it to be ice cold. So what do you do? You take, you take an ice cube tray and you fill it with water, right? And you put it in the freezer. And then what do you do? Yeah, you got to be patient, right? You got to be patient, But when the ice is ready and you pull it out and you put that ice in your Coke, you put that ice in the iced tea, what happens? It makes it so much better. It's worth the wait. See, what God is trying to teach us today is that we can be patient, waiting on his promises, because they will be worth the wait. 
Amen. Oh, I got a minute and a half left for crying out loud. I could have talked longer. <laughs> so, uh, but, but thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, for paying attention and, and may, may God bless your day and your week and uh, our lives together. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand as we prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and has given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
I invite the congregation to please stand. Now may this eating and drinking of Christ's true body and blood strengthen and preserve you into life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing your sins are forgiven and you are made free and strong to live forever. Amen. And receive the benediction of the Lord that God gave to Aaron to bless the Israelites with. It's recorded in the book of Numbers and it's still a blessing for us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope and pray that this worship service was a blessing to you. If you haven't already, please fill out the online connection card. Just go to our website, stjohn.tv, click on Worship Resources. We'd love to know that you worshiped with us today. And if you'd like to make a donation to the Lord's work at St. John, you can do that on our website also. Again, stjohn.tv, click on Give. Many of our families tithe. That is, they give 10% of their income. Would you please pray about what you can give to the work of the Lord here at St. John? Thank you very much, and God bless you and your family.